Hey, what's going on today on White Collar Garage? We're going to change an uh, AC compressor on this 99 Pontiac Trans Am or Firebird. Okay, so this thing's real low to the ground, so we have to go in here through the side to get around the spoiler that's underneath here <clears throat> and to get on the cross member. Okay, now we're going to take the serpentine belt off. And that's a 15 millimeter socket. You can also use a 15 millimeter wrench to loosen it up. We got to get the AC lines off and they're back here with 13 millimeter bolt. I'm going to have to try to get it with a, a wrench, a 13 millimeter wrench, or I'm going to try this ratcheting wrench right here to get up in there. And I'm going to do it coming through the back side to get on this nut, that this bolt that's in there. Okay, so now we got the line loose. We have four 15 millimeter bolts, one here, one here, and then two on the, two on the top side, which are gonna be real hard to get to because it's super tight. So this is the, the connector that we took off the AC compressor right here. We're changing this AC compressor because the front seal right up in here is leaking oil all over the place. So that's another way how you can tell if your AC compressor is bad is it's with it leaking fluid all over the place. Okay, one thing I forgot to do was take the belt off. So that's another 15 millimeter and we got to turn it clockwise to, re to, to relieve it. Now these are kind of hard to do so what I do is I press them back and I put them around the back of the crank pulley and that gives me enough room to get the belt off and around the head of the AC compressor. If you try to release this tensioner and pull it around the top of the AC compressor it won't work. So that's why I set it around the back of the crank pulley. Okay as you can see these things are up in here pretty tight. So we took the AC hose, the, it's a one piece hose, they're, they're connected together with the other one. So we took it and we wedged it and we slid it to the side and back and wedged it up in there. Now this line, this, this, uh, there's a wiring loom up here that's in the way. And there's also this bolt in the way from the ratchet going back and forth. So we're going to take this out. So we're having to try to get up in there with a one inch extension and uh, we're going to see how this works. Okay, so it's loose enough where the ratchet won't, won't come back on the ratcheting part of it but it's tight enough to where I can't get it with my fingers up in there. So we're gonna take the screwdriver and push on the socket and hold it so we can get the ratchet to ratchet back. Okay, now these are the seals on the back that seal the line to the AC compressor. We're gonna to have to change those. And these are on there pretty well. Usually you can just take them and twist them off but they're not coming off that way. So we're gonna take our screwdriver and push it in there and see, they just pop right off. And there you go. Okay, here's our new AC compressor that we got. This one was purchased off eBay from a reputable company. So they've already loaded this and they say it comes preloaded with, with oil. And you can see that down inside here, it's preloaded with oil. One thing we wanna do though is for leaks, we want to add some AC dye to it. So we're just going to pour a little bit of this dye into the compressor also. Doesn't take much. Just put a little bit in there. If you want to measure like a quarter ounce or something, but you don't want to get dirt in this compressor. So it's nice that they gave these, this nice little rubber grommet and stuff. We're going to put that back on and we're going to seal this back up. 
and we're going to put this bolt back on there so we don't get any dirt in it when we put it back up in here. And you can see they gave us new new seals for the, that go back here. Whenever you change the AC compressor, you got to make sure that you always replace these seals. We're going to set this thing back up in here. First thing we're going to do though is we're going to put the new seals on there. Sometimes they're a little harder than others. Remember to put these two bolts back up in here. They might fall out when I set them up in here, but we've got to make sure we have these bolts up in here. Like I said, they're wanting to slide out. There we go. Now I'm going to start these bolts on the bottom to hold the AC compressor. You can only use the tip of your two fingers to get up in there and get the bolt. And you have the AC line in your way like it's playing with me right now. And you also have this, there's a wiring harness loom in your way too. So this is really tied up in here and it's not very much fun. You might have to reset a couple times because your fingers might cramp. And also I'm having to lift it up a little bit to line up where the bolt goes. And this AC line is really making my fingers hurt. So we're gonna try to really jam that out of the way. Okay, now. That's as tight as we can get it. So if these aren't going to tighten up or go back and forth as our ratchet goes, I'm going to hold it with the screwdriver. You can also take this screwdriver and pry on the back side of it so it holds on to the bolt. Now it can just go nice and fast. So now we got to hook up the AC lines and I've got to do it through the back underneath this cross member here and you got to reach up through a hole with your fingers to get the bolt started and you're going to use a 13 millimeter wrench to give you a little perspective on this there's the bolt right up through there for the ac compressor so i'm reaching my hand up through this hole right here and then also you can reach up right through there across the top over the top of the motor mount and that's how i got it started so now we got the ac compressor all bolted up. Now we're gonna put the AC belt on. Like I said, when we took it off, we're gonna put it around the compressor first, and then we're gonna slide it around the back of the crank pulley. So it's on the back side of the crank pulley. And then we're gonna have it, and we're gonna put it around the tensioner as I can get it there. So now we're around the tensioner and there's a top pulley too. So you want to put it in that top pulley right up here. It might be hard to see, but where my finger's pointing, there's a top pulley there. So now we got it on the two pulleys and around the back side of the crank pulley. So we're going to line it up and then we're going to start working the belt around. I got the belt worked around a little bit on the top. And then we're going to take our 15 millimeter Put it on the tensioner, churn it, tighten it, and put it around the crank pulley. And then it fell off, so then we're going to put it back there. And we're going to make sure it's in the holder all the way. Loosen it up. And then you always take your hand and make sure that it's in the groove all the way around the crank pulley and the two idler pulleys here and make sure they're centered up. All right, now it's time to charge it. Now we're going to put the serpentine belt on. We're going to feed it down around the crank pulley. Okay, on this I choose to go around the tensioner first and then the last one will go around 
is the power steering pump. Just like the other ones, make sure that it's seated on all the tensioners and, and pulleys right. And right there, there's a diagram of how the belts go on. So that's a nice reference. Okay, now we're gonna hook up our gauges. Fortunately for us, this AC system was already discharged or leaked out all the refrigerant. If your AC system's completely full, you need to go to a shop and have them evacuate it for you. You don't wanna let the air conditioning fluid, uh, 134, go out into the atmosphere. You take these two fittings off, set these over here. I bought this manifold gauge set from Harbor Freight. It was pretty inexpensive. I think it was 50 bucks. So these are quick connecting fit, quick connection fittings. Of course, I would have a problem with it. And then you have to screw the little blue knob on the top of it, and this stands for the low side, and put it into the evaporator. Then the high side is red for the high side pressure. Those pressures run, you know, higher, around the 150 to 250 mark. So now that we have the gauges put in here, we have to draw a vacuum on the system to get all the moisture because whenever you open up an AC system, it's going to create moisture and suck in moisture, especially in this evaporate or this, um, especially in this accumulator right here. That's got a desiccant bag in there and it keeps the refrigerant dry. So we got to suck out all of the moisture in the system. I bought this right here also from Harbor Freight. Uh, you can get them online also. This is used as an air compressor. You plug it in the back right here. It draws a vacuum through it. And then you connect the gauge, the, the yellow hose. You connect that up like so. You screw that on. Tighten it up. Now when you draw a vacuum on a system, you want to do it through the low side. And the low side is this blue side right here. And uh, we, we got this on here because we don't want to scratch this Firebird. So I'm going to set this over here on the ground. Make sure my gauges and stuff are in. And now I'm going to close both the valves if they were open. Now I'm going to plug this in. It's going to get real loud from the air compressor and the, and the vacuum pump. Now we're going to open up this valve. As you can see, it's drawing a vacuum on it in the negative. This thing needs to get to minus 29 to get all the vacuum, all the moisture out of the system. Once it gets down there close, okay, we've hit minus 29. Now we're going to let this sit here and suck down on this gauge for about 10 minutes. All right, now we're going to jack this thing up and lower it back down. When we go at an angle like this, we want to make sure that we lower it down fairly slow. Okay, so we've sucked this thing down for 10 minutes, and then we've let it sit for 20 minutes, and we check the gauge to make sure it hasn't dropped down at all. And it hasn't dropped down at all, so we're, we're looking pretty. If it does drop down, that means that you have a leak somewhere else in the system. And then you'd have to put a little bit of refrigerant in it, fire it off, and let that die get in there and find the leak. But it's holding vacuum, so we're doing fine. So now we're gonna charge the system. And whenever you charge a system, you wanna make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Because if this refrigerant happens to get in your eye, game over, you're blind in that eye. This instantly blinds you. So make sure you're always wearing safety glasses whenever you mess around with refrigerant. So we just screw this onto the little fitting that we bought. And now 
we're gonna open up. Whenever you charge an AC system, you always charge through the low side. You never charge through the high side. The low side basically is the AC compressor sucking the fluid around and circulating it. And the high side is, is the pressure side of it that's putting pressure into the evaporator to make the, the pressure differential so you get the high pressure, then it turns to low pressure, and then that's what creates the cooling system, the cooling in the evaporator. So this system says that it takes 24 ounces, which is two of these 12 ounce cans. I usually put my hands on it to give it a little bit of heat. People dump these in hot water and all kinds of stuff, but I, I don't feel a need to do that. Once you get one can of refrigerant, most of the time in any system, you can start up the car and turn the air conditioning on and it will uh, suck in the rest of the fluid. So right now we're at that point of um, basically starting it up. Oop. It's still going. So I'll shake it to see if there's any refrigerant left in it and it's empty so we'll close the blue valve now because we need to turn the change the can you close that blue valve now there's gonna be refrigerant that leaks out because this yellow line is full of refrigerant so we'll get a little bit of refrigerant coming out right now so I just barely turn this thing to where we hear the hiss there's the hiss got a little bit more And there, that's it. Now we'll grab the next can, screw it on. Open up the valve. This can will put, will, uh, it has some pressure in it, so it will put some refrigerant in it also, pressurize it. One thing also you're going to need to do is, I got a digital one, you can get a, a regular cheap one that's just a thermometer. We're going to take this thermometer and we're going to turn it on and we're going to put it in the vents. And when we start it up and have the air conditioning going, we're going to check the temperature that comes out of the vents. So now we're going to start this thing up and get the rest of this can to suck in through the low side of the air conditioning and then we'll start checking our temperatures also right now we have an ambient temperature of 75 degrees so we should have minimum 55 out the vents but we want to see somewhere around the 45 degree mark and now we got the car running and we got the valve open and it's sucking the rest of those refrigerant in we're just waiting for it to suck the rest of the refrigerant in Okay, it sucked the rest of the refrigerant in, so we're going to close this. And now just like the other one, we're going to unscrew this can nice and slowly. And there we go. So right now our pressures are reading around 27 and a little under, a little over 200. The fans haven't clicked on yet, so this is pretty much a pretty good temperature or pressures to be running at. Now we're going to go check and see what the vent temperature is. Okay, now we got a temperature of 41.2, so that's looking pretty good. I'd call it a wrap on this. Okay, so once we shut the car off, I like to let the gate the uh, pressures equalize. So then when we screw these off, we don't lose that much refrigerant that's inside the lines right here. Because you always use a, lose a little bit of refrigerant in the lines. So we just unscrew these valves. Pop them off. Then we're going to take the caps and put the caps back on here. You want to make sure you put caps back on there because there's Schrader valves inside here. And when dust and dirt gets down inside them, it can create some issues. So there you go, that's uh, changing an AC compressor on a 99 Pontiac Firebird. 
We'll see you next time on White Collar Garage.